Hello friends. In the last lecture, we talk about the uh, static and the dynamic characteristics of the transducers. Now let's try to uh, elaborate the uh, one of the type of the uh, transducer that is a displacement transducer. Uh, this type of the transducers has device uh, devices are uh, intended to convert the motion of an object or the machine into the electromagnetic or the magnetoelectric or the electrostatic uh, signals means in this case the uh, uh, the motion of the object or the machine will be uh, converted into the uh, electromagnetic or the magnetoelectronic or else the electrostatic uh, signal in general that the electric signal uh, uh, would be there so that this conversion of this uh, displacement into the uh, electronic uh, signal this is what the main intention behind to have the displacement transducer and this signal this uh, electronic signals are uh, read and the interpreted into the uh, data so they will be read and the interpreted into the corresponding data for the uh, uh, other purposes uh, we know that the displacement is a vector quantity and representing a change in the position of the body or the point with respect to the some uh, fixed frame of the reference okay, or some frame of the uh, reference. We can't uh, only relate uh, deal with the uh, fixed frame of the uh, reference. The displacement may be linear or the angular uh, and can be expressed in the absolute or the relative terms. If it is a Fixed, then we can have the its uh, uh, scalar uh, value. Uh, we can say it's the absolute value, or else relative terms. Uh, we can talk about the when the point initial point is a moving one. Uh, it is a fundamental quantity. Uh, displacement is a fundamental quantity. The basic sensing device here is uh, widely used uh, or widely adapted for. Uh, measurements of the many derived quantities so uh, this fundamental quantity will be used uh, to derive the uh, many uh, fundamental oh, sorry many derived quantities okay uh, its magnitude ranges from the few microns to the few centimeters or the few seconds to the uh, round the uh, clock yes, so you can uh, go up to the maybe 24 hours in a few hours we can uh, go the major electrical uh, transaction principles used are uh, actually the uh, resistive type okay and the, in this uh, resistive types we can have the variable re uh, resistance uh, then the variable inductance and the variable um, uh, capacitance as well so the, uh, we can uh, now uh, we'll be trying to look into the uh, one of the type that is a uh, resistive type then we'll talk about the inductive um, variable inductance and the um, uh, capacitive type as well in the uh, successing uh, lectures the first case the variable uh, resistance devices so the uh, when the displacement we are trying to measure then obviously uh, and that displacement will be measured in terms of the changes happening in the uh, resistance of that uh, particular device so what is the basic principle behind here uh, uh, basic principle uh, behind this uh, type of the transducers uh, the uh, these elements works on the principle that the resistance of a conductor resistance of a conductor is directly proportional to the length of the conductor and inversely proportional uh, to the area of the conductor okay so here generally area means the cross sectional area of that uh, conductor uh, the resistance of the conductor is proportional to the length of the conductor and the inversely proportional to the area of the conductor and if you uh, just uh, try to understand the thing the proportionality constant could be the uh, proportionality constant could be the our uh, resistivity of that particular material the function of the displacement uh, is achieved by the variation in the length of the sensing element the displacement uh, measurement works on the principle that the changes in the length of the sensing element results in the change in the resistance of the sensing element so do you remember the main principle of the displacement transducer changes in the length of the sensing element results in the change in uh, resistance of a sensing uh, element the sensing element is basically a resistive potentiometer or the, we call it as a part resistance okay well known as a part resistance it consists of uh, uh, resistance element provided with the sliding co contacts we call it as a 
or viper one so it is a kind of the resistance uh, this is the uh, resistance and uh, viper is uh, 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 this one which is uh, moving on the uh, uh, register okay so so resistive element provided with the sliding contact so these sliding contacts are called as the wiper now the sliding contact is attached to an insulating plunger type shaft which mechanically links with uh, a point under a <coughs> measurement the motion of the wiper may be translate uh, translational or the uh, rotational or the uh, sometimes we can have the combined type of the motion translation as well as the rotational one uh, of the two allowing of two allowing the measurements of the linear or the angular uh, displacement in uh, now first of all we will consider the uh, li linear potential motor and then we will uh, uh, simulation will talk about the other things as the motion or uh, as the angular uh, type of the transducers okay, or angular displacement can be so the in a linear potentiometer motion of the sliding contact is a translator uh, in a rotary potentiometer the motion of the sliding contact is a uh, rotational one okay so this is the case of the uh, translatory type of the devices and in case of here uh, uh, the uh, type of the device is the rotational type when uh, the sliding contact displaces or the rotates uh, the resistance between the output terminal uh, changes so that the output voltage also changes so from the figure what we understand uh, here it is now if the circuit is unloaded the output voltage uh, is a certain function of the input voltage that is e uh, depending upon the position of the sliding contact yes, if there is a no input is applied so this uh, pointer could be uh, somewhere on this line or maybe sometimes over here but if suppose try to apply the uh, input it obviously it try to move uh, on this uh, resistance or in the uh, in a angular manner and uh, obviously it slides over this uh, type of the uh, this type of the shape we can call it as a rotational type of the shape and uh, obviously the output correspondingly get farad as it slides over it so the output will be proportional to the uh, input voltage applied and this proportionality depends upon the uh, where this pointer is pointing on so this resistances uh, can have the values of the suppose i can consider the value of this resistance is uh, uh, r2 which is changed and the remaining is the r1 so what we can have the r2 upon so output voltage is measured with respect to the ground here the common terminal so that this is the uh, resistance we call it as r1 and the remaining resistance will be the r2 and total resistance will be the r1 plus r2 so here this remains the constant one so uh, input voltage if it is a constant one then output voltage is proportional to the r2 in this case in some potentiometer the motion of the sliding contact is combination of both types of the motion uh, such a type of the potentiometer has a resistive element in the form of the helix and the potentiometer is also known as the uh, helipod okay so here uh, the has a resistive element in the form of the helix so the, there are plenty of the uh, wire is founded in a, a circular manner but uh, having the successive uh, difference between their uh, uh, turns so this will uh, form the helical like path helical like path and obviously uh, the pointer will be also trying to move on this helical uh, type of the uh, resistance and we can call such a type of the potentiometer as a helipot now the, here the he helical uh, resistive elements are multi turn rotational devices which can be used for the measurement of either translatory or the uh, rotational uh, motion so we can have here as uh, sometimes we can have the translation motion or uh, means suppose the wiper if we put a pointer of the wiper over this and it type of moves on this then we can call it as a, uh, a translator motion or sometimes we can have the um, uh, circular one then we can get the uh, or a rotational one then we can get uh, the helical path over uh, here the constructional feature of the translation and rotational potentiometer as follows let's see there are three major elements in the potential uh, ohmetric displacement transducer the first one is the uh, winding wire the second one is the winding former 
and the uh, last one is the wiper one so we can understand from this figure as well this is the input signal is provided this is a winding former over which it is wounded and then the uh, wire wounding it is in the circular and you can wound on this former and this is the pointer uh, which is going to move or slide over this uh, raised wire we call it as a wiper okay sorry and uh, the distance between these two, uh, two ends of the wiper is fixed one but uh, the wiper position over that uh, uh, resistance uh, or wire uh, changes the output depending upon the input which we have applied over here and obviously as the distance moves uh, the uh, wiper moves over this uh, resistance then obviously its value goes on changing depending upon its uh, position uh, correspondingly output will get changed the constructional features of the translational and the rotary potentiometer are as follows so the now uh, here uh, we can have uh, the another type of the uh, device this is a rotational one okay angular motion we can detect over here so instead of having the uh, translator motion here we can have the uh, rotational type of the uh, wiper over here or a rotational type of the transitive circuit okay so uh, as the input is changed the uh, uh, pointer moves on the circular scale bar and correspondingly output will get uh, changed the winding wire is a, a precision drawn resistance wire of a diameter about the 20 to 50 microns in size. The commonly used uh, materials are uh, uh, mostly uh, the uh, ratio type of the transducers or the uh, resistance material used is uh, of the alloys and they are of the mostly metal alloys, metal metal alloys. So uh, copper and nickel, nickel chromium or and the uh, silver palladium alloys are used uh, for the construction or the uh, construction of the uh, transducer the winding wire is wound over the cylindrical or the flat uh, mandrel of the uh, ceramic winding farmers uh, must be a good dimensional stability and the surface insulations uh, the wipers are uh, sp spring elements made up of the tempered phosphor bronze alloys and are suitably shaped to move uh, over the resistive element with minimum uh, friction the accuracy depends upon on the wiper contact uh, wiper contact force and the contact uh, resistance to get the good resolution the ac good resolution accuracy sensitivity and the linearity these are the static characteristics of this uh, transducers uh, the following characteristics must be possessed by the uh, transducer so uh, depending upon this i uh, mean uh, to get the such a kind of the good characteristic so, uh, it must possess uh, uh, some characteristics and which are they the winding wire uh, should be strong ductile and protected from the surface corrosion uh, to have avoid the uh, environmental effects on uh, the wire the surface stability of the wire with uh, respect to the time should be very high so surface stability of the wire with respect to time must be the high then uh, the wire should have the low temperature coefficient of the resistance means, uh, if we are uh, trying to measure the uh, resistance of the wire for longer period of the time and using the high current then uh, do, because of this high current then it's uh, uh, heating effect the joule effect uh, joule heating law uh, comes into the picture and this will uh, increase the uh, temperature of the wire and obviously it will uh, change uh, its uh, temperature coefficient for a good linearity uh, wire must be of uh, uniform diameter and a specific uh, resistance the winding wire can be linear toroidal or helical and should possess a uniform spacing uh, with constant uh, tension resolution depends on the wiper width uh, diameter of the wire and the spacing between the adjacent turns so it should be the simple uh, to operate and uh, uh, means uh, it is actually very simple to operate and are uh, inexpensive 
useful for the applications where the requirements are not uh, particularly uh, savory means obviously there are uh, fictional properties comes into the picture so obviously uh, most useful uh, here the requirements are not uh, particularly savory here what are the advantages of this type of the transducer the potentiometers are useful for the measures of the large amplitudes of the uh, displacement displacement transducers uh, can be used for the measurement of the derived quantities like force uh, pressure stress etc electrical coefficient is high so they provide a sufficient output to allow a control uh, operation and what are the disadvantages of this type of the transducer that is a poor dynamic response because it required the very high amplitude to slide over the contact then the poor resolution and the uh, presence of the noise in a signal because the uh, wear and tear uh, of the uh, material uh, because of the frictions as well L large force is required to slide the contacts in the uh, linear parts the sliding contacts can wear out so generate the noise thank you